Hey what's up, it's cute what if this side. Today we will be seeing, what if Deku was in love with Melissa. Now before we move ahead with the fic, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. For future what ifs like this. Destruction. Ruins. Death. It's all that's left. Izuku, in his agunuman form, gets up from the ground. His breathing is heavy. He's tired. One of his hands is stopping the bleeding on his chest. Izuku's gaze focuses on what's in front of him. Izuku looks back, he can see Shinso, Shoto, Melissa and Kaminari on the ground behind him. Totally defeated, there are other people as well. Izuku grunts at the pain of his wound, looks down at his fist full of, his. Izuku looks ahead, there is a gigantic Digimon destroying everything in its path. Said Digimon is a seven-legged beast with one eye on each, and has an eighth eye on its head. There is a sword stuck in each of its legs, like Lusum in Satan mode. It wears the crowns of the seven deadly sins on its head. Izuku looks at his fist one more time clenching it hard, using what little strength he has left. Izuku goes and stands in front of the Digimon. The Digimon roars at him while Izuku closes his eyes for a second. Izuku opens his eyes, his eyes showing determination. Izuku takes out his D-scan. Ancient spirit evolution Izuku screams and transforms into Suzanuman. Izuku summons Orochi as the Digimon roars at him again. They both look at each other and charge at each other, ready to continue fighting. Yeah that's how things are now. But before seeing how it all ends you should know what happened to get us here. Well I guess I can tell you what happened. One year after Lusaman's defeat. Hey hurry up and bring them one guy said to another who was carrying two cages. All good. The second guy puts the cages on the ground. Yes, with this we already have everything, right? The first guy uncovers the cages and sees what they contain. They are two baby level Digimon. Yes, with this we meet the required amount the guy gets up and opens the curtains behind them, revealing several more cages with baby level Digimon inside. The client pays very well for this. So this is where you hide, how a voice said. The two guys turn to look in the direction of the voice and see a boy. Said boy has short undercut green hair, green eyes and four diamond-shaped freckles on each cheek. Said boy is dressed in red tennis shoes, black pants, a green shirt, and a red jacket. Said jacket has the symbol of the digital fire element on the back. This boy is Izuku Midoriya Aka the digital hero, Agni. Age 18. Quirk Nun. Digimon partner Nun. He possesses the digital spirits of fire. Student from UA High. Hero Course Class 3A. Izuku, after the defeat of Lusamin, has changed, there is no longer any sign of that nervous, and shy boy, now he has matured, physically he has grown from being one of the shortest in his class to being among the tallest. He is still the leader of the Chosen Ones, although it has been a long time since they have worked as a team as such, the others still consider him the leader, and the strongest among them. Couldn't you choose a nicer place to do your things Izuku asked sarcastically. Don't get involved in other people's business, kid the first guy said while transforming his hand into a sword. B-boss I don't think it's good to try to confront the boy the second guy said. Why he's just a boy the first guy said. You don't know who he is he is the other guy said but Izuku interrupted him. Don't worry, I prefer to show you who I am. Izuku said as he rolled up the right sleeve of his jacket, thus revealing a device on his forearm. Opening the cover of the device reveals that it is a touch screen. D-terminal connected agunuman appears on the screen of the device. Spirit evolution Izuku slides his ring and middle finger on the screen and then extends his arm to the side and is then surrounded by data. Inside the data, Izuku's clothes were stored inside the D-terminal. Izuku points the D-terminal forward and it projects a screen showing agunuman. The screen explodes in a blur of data that covers Izuku and transforms him into agunuman. Then on his right shoulder a different shoulder pad replaces the one he already had. The transformation is complete. The data disappeared and instead of Izuku there was Agunuman however, Agunuman was strange, different. Although Agunuman at first glance looks the same as always, now his suit under his armor, previously black, is now dark green, his eyes are now green, the same as Izuku's, and his hair, which previously reached his back, now it barely reaches his shoulders, his hair is still yellow but the glow, previously red, is now green. Finally, the right shoulder pad was replaced with another grey one with the symbol of the chosen ones on it. The symbol of the chosen ones is a creation of their own. It is represented by the six symbols of the elements of each one. In the case of Izuku the symbol of fire is in the center and surrounding it in a circle are the other five ones but smaller. And now is when you realize who I am. Izuku said with a smile. The digital hero the lost legends opening. From the shadows a seated woman appears, re Kishibe. The place lights up and Kishibe smiles evilly as his eyes begin to glow blue. As a flashback, the six chosen ones are seen fighting Lusamin during the first war. It is seen when the six chosen ones throw a large sphere of energy with their powers united at Lusamin. As a flashback, it is now seen when Suzanuman shoots Lusamin Sate and mowed a beam from his weapon, Orochi. In the present day Izuku, in his Agunimog form, is seen charging at someone unseen. The rest of the chosen ones, in their forms of their respective human spirits, like Izuku, charge against someone unseen. That someone turns out to be Kishibe, who when she sees the chosen ones, her appearance glistens a little while she smiles evilly, 
and her eyes shine blue. The six chosen ones are seen in a group, Izuku in the middle, on his right Melissa and Shoto, on his left Shinso, Kaminari and Toya. Now Kishibe is seen sitting on a throne while she has a sword resting on the left of her throne. To her right is Sudu and behind her there are six figures in the shadows, each one with a sword. Kishibe slowly rises from the throne. Kishibe walks through a dark hallway. When Kishibe stops the background behind her lights up revealing a gigantic digit inside a glass tube. Then you see several scenes of people walking in the streets accompanied by several Digimon, the new normal life. Izuku is in the center of the city, he is relaxed. The breeze moves his hair and Izuku looks up at the sky with a smile. Like Izuku, Kaminari, Shoto, Shinso and Melissa are also in the center of the city, all enjoying the quiet day. They all talk among themselves while Melissa looks ahead and smiles. Toya is leaning against a wall while memories of when he was dabai flash through his head. Toya clenches his fist and then looks up with a determined expression. Kishibe approaches the glass tube where the digig is. Kishibe touches the crystal with her right hand. The egg begins to break, upon seeing this Kishibe smiles, the egg begins to glow and everything explodes while a glow covers the entire room. The screen splits and you see Izuku and Kishibe, the first with a frown and the second with an evil smile. Izuku, in his agunim and form charges at Kishibe with a punch. Shinso, in his labum and form also charges at Kishibe with his swords. Izuku and Shinsu attack Kishibe but she easily dodges the attacks and sends them flying with a kick each one. Melissa, in her Kaisman form, and Kaminari, in his Beetleman form, attack Kishibe. Melissa with a gust of wind from her hands and Kaminari with an electric beam from his horn. However, Kishibe easily deflects the attacks with her hands which explode behind her. Shoto, in his Paladroman form, attacks Kishibe but she easily dodges him and sends him flying with one blow. Toya, in his Loeman form, attacks Kishibe with his spear, but she dodges it and then grabs him by the neck and throws him away. Izuku gets up from the ground and attacks Kishibe with a fire punch, but she easily stops it with her hand. Izuku frowns as he tries to push his attack, Kishibe for her part just smiles evilly. Shota, a blue-haired girl and Nezu appear in Nezu's office, interestingly an Iceman scatter mode is climbing on Aizawa as if it were a scarf. A woman appears in a room dressed in red, with white hair, sunglasses, and a hat, alongside her is a stooped man dressed in a royal blue coat and an odd hat with randomly scattered golden buttons, a gray belt, blue pants, dark brown gloves and black shoes, in addition to having a cane to lean on. For a few seconds a creature with seven eyes and seven legs appears. Kishibe appears with Sudu and the six shadow figures. The six chosen ones appear and behind them a spirit in the form of Suzanuman. The digital hero Lost Legends. Both guys stare at Izuku. The first guy with confusion and the second with fear. Really no reaction Izuku asks the first guy. I do not care who you are die the guy said as he attacked Izuku with his hand turned into a sword. Seriously I wish you'd recognized me. Izuku said as he stopped the sword with his left hand without taking damage. Because you would make my job easier pyro punch Izuku hits the guy with a strong fire punch, rendering him unconscious with just that blow. Izuku looks at the other guy, and now is when you give up. Izuku said. The guy quickly takes one of the cages and runs out of the building so that a pair of wings sprout from his back and takes flight. Izuku follows him and points his right wrist at the guy but sees something that makes him stop. I won't need to intervene. Izuku thought as he turns around and goes towards the Digimon cages but not without first making sure that the first guy is unconscious. The second guy sees how Izuku turns around and thinks he let him go. Two can't believe it he let me go but then he receives a kick in the face from someone else. Izuku leaves the building dragging the guy he knocked out at that moment the digital police arrive. Digital police. Organization that was founded after some Digimon began to live in the human world. They are in charge of supervising crimes related to Digimon and acting accordingly is made up of humans and Digimon. Just in time gentlemen, there are several cages with Digimon trapped inside. Izuku said. Understood, Agni. The chief said. We will ensure that they return to the digital world safely. Izuku nods at the moment of also handing over the criminal to the authorities. It is that moment. Next to him, Ryukyu lands. Good job, every day you seem more professional than me. Ryukyu said. Ryuko Tatsuma Aka Ryukyu. After the defeat of Lusaman, Izuku continued working under Ryukyu. Thanks to her participation in both wars, Ryukyu climbed quite a few places in the top, now being Japan's number 5 hero. Ryukyu's quirk has also improved, now she is able to do a partial transformation, remaining human size, but adopting dragon aspects such as a tail, wings, scales and claws, her right arm is now a prosthetic one which can grow to adjust to her dragon form. Izuku was going to answer, but then someone lands next to him, Ryukyu and he turned to look at her. Melissa was the one who landed, carrying the cage with the Digimon in her hand, and the unconscious criminal in the other. Melissa is in her Kaisman form but, like Izuku, this form is different than it used to be. 
The first thing to notice is that under her clothes she now has a black full body suit, now no longer leaving her skin exposed. On the other hand, her hair is now blonde and stylized to look more like Melissa's. Finally, her right shoulder pad is the same one that Izuku has, only that Melissa has the symbol of the wind element in the center surrounded by the other five. Melissa hands the cage and the criminal over to the authorities and then heads to Izuku and Ryukyu. So this is it, right she asked. At the moment, we managed to find the meeting point, but we still have no idea who the client is, Ryukyu said. I don't think these guys know anything, even they had no idea who their employer was. Izuku said. Well at least we managed to capture a couple more criminals. Melissa said. Exactly, good job, both of you. Ryukyu said. This is all for today, you can return to UA. Izuku and Melissa nod and return to their human form. Another day at the office, I guess. Melissa said. Melissa shield Ak of the wind hero, Sylph. AJ Tian. Quirk nun. Digimon partner nun. She possesses the digital spirits of wind. Student from UA High. Hero course class 3A. Like Izuku, Melissa's appearance has also changed. Melissa has become the definition of a beautiful woman. She has grown taller. Although she is no longer taller than Izuku, she is the second tallest girl in her class. Only below Momo, her hair, which previously reached her hips, is now shorter, barely reaching her elbows, and her style is now straight instead of wavy. Melissa's clothes have also changed. She now wears red boots, a pair of black stockings that reach above her knees, a black skirt, and a white t-shirt. Over the t-shirt she has a jacket similar to Izuku's. Only hers is purple and in the back has the symbol of the digital element of wind. Okay, shall we go Izuku asks Melissa as he extends his hand to her. Melissa smiles and shakes her head and then begins to walk. Let's go Romeo, she said. Izuku smiles and quickly goes to his side and they both go in the direction of the Ryukyu agency to change into their school uniform and then return to UA. 3A dorms. The dorms are one of the things that have changed, although the building remains the same. It now has a small parking lot next to it. This is because some of the class already have a vehicle. Speaking of vehicles, a motorcycle parks in the parking lot. It is Izuku's motorcycle, which was a gift from his mother. Izuku drives while having Melissa sitting behind him. After parking, they both continue on their way to the building, but halfway there they cross paths with someone they know. Hey, it's Hitoshi, Izuku said. Hitoshi Shinso, another of the chosen ones, turns around and smiles when he sees his teammates and friends. Hi, Shinso waves at them. Hitoshi Shinso Aka the light hero, Wolf. AJ Tian. Quirk brainwashing. Digimon partner none. He possesses the digital spirits of light. Student from UA High. Hero course class 3A. Shinso, unlike Izuku and Melissa, has not changed much in terms of appearance. Besides growing in height, he remains practically the same as a year ago, except that his facial expression no longer denotes tiredness like before. You're back, how was it Shinso asked. More of the same, more people trying to sell Digimon. Izuku said. Oh really you won't believe it but me too. Shinso said. How is it possible there are more and more people trying to sell Digimon despite all the existing security? Melissa said. And more importantly who are the groups behind this? I think it's not some groups Izuku said. I think it's only one person or at least only one group. What makes you think that Melissa asked? I'm not saying it Nezu says it. Izuku said. I will explain it to when we are with Shoto and Denki, it would be better to explain it to everyone. Maybe Shoto can contact Toya if he is not busy. Alright, then let's not waste time. Shinso said. Let's get inside. Without further ado, the trio continues walking until they enter the dorms. When Izuku entered the common room, he almost tripped because someone passed between his legs. Although rather, instead of someone, it was a pair of. Oh I'm sorry. They were a pair of Digimon. The first one is a light pink humanoid Digimon with gray eyes. Its fingers are a gradient of dark violet to lime green in color. Its outfit consists of a black sleeveless leotard with magenta and black striped leggings that go all the way to her feet. It also wears a medium blue jellyfish-like hat that has countless lime green tipped tentacles protruding from it, and a pink target-like symbol on the front. This Digimon is a Jellimon. The other is a blue insectoid Digimon, green eyes, a horn on its forehead and a yellow scarf on its neck. This Digimon is a Kakabuterimon. Don't worry Izuku said. And now you might wonder, why are there Digimon in the dorms? Well, after the development of the Digimon Tamer project, some UA students were selected to have a Digimon partner. Izuku smiles. Don't worry, go on with your thing. He said. Jellyman and Kakabuterimon smile and head to the common room of the dorms, going with their human partners. Jellyaman climbs on top of the head of a pink-skinned girl, Mina Ishido. Mina Ishido Aka Pinky. AJ Teen. Quark Acid. Digimon partner Jellyman. Student from UA High. Hero Course Class 3A. For his part, Kakabuterimon climbs onto the shoulder of a girl with short purple hair, Kayoka Gyro. Kayoka Gyro Aka Earphone Jack. AJ Teen. Quark Earphone Jack. Digimon partner Kakabuterimon. Student from UA High. Hero Course Class 3A. Hey, Hitoshikun, Dekikun, Melisachin, your back a voice said. The three turn to look and are greeted by their classmate, Achako Yuraka, who is being accompanied by her Digimon partner, Lunamon. 
Achako Yuraka Akiyuravity, AJ Teen, Quark Zero Gravity, Digimon Partner Lunaman, Student from UA High, Hero Course Class 3A. Hitoshi smiles and hugs Yuraka and then everyone goes to sit on the couches with the others. So you're back how did it go Kayoka asked. You know more problems with Digimon dealers. Izuku said. By the way, are Shoto and Denki back? Nope Mina said. They are still out. Oh well I guess they're still busy. Izuku said. In that case we will have to wait. I see their back Ada said as he is accompanied by an anthropomorphic blue dog-like Digimon who has a red ribbon tied around his head covering some sort of yellow mark. He wears a pair of boxing gloves. Tenya Ida Ako Ingenium. AJ Teen. Quirk Engine. Digimon Partner Gaiaman. Student from UA High. Hero Course Class 3A. Tenya, Gaiaman, how are you Melissa asked. We are fine, thanks for asking. How was it for you Ada said. Nothing spectacular, we're just waiting for Shoto and Denki, I think we found a clue to stop the Digimon dealers. Izuku said. I see I guess Shoto and Denki are still out. Ada said. You know when duty calls. Izuku said. I wonder what they are doing right now. Meanwhile, on the other side, Shoto, accompanied by Endeavor and Agumon, are seeing a warehouse in the distance that seems abandoned. Is this the place Shoto asks looking at the warehouse in the distance? According to reports, yes. Endeavor said. What are we waiting for let's do it Agumon said. Is this the place Shoto asks looking at the warehouse in the distance? Like the others, Shoto has changed, his hair has grown, now reaching his shoulders, although he usually has it tied in a ponytail. His suit is also different, he is dressed in black boots, black pants, a red shirt, and a white jacket, said jacket has the symbol of the digital ice element on the back. On his right arm he has his D-terminal. Shoto Todoroki Aka Frost. AJ Teen. Quark Absolute Zero. Digimon Partner None. He possesses the digital spirits of ice. Student from UA High. Hero Course Class 3A. According to reports, yes. Endeavor said. NG Todoroki Aka Endeavor. Age 47. Quark Hellflame. Digimon Partner Agumon. After the defeat of Lusamon, Endeavor continued with his position as Japan's number one hero. But now he has his Digimon partner, Agumon, who is now part of Endeavor's image. What are we waiting for let's do it Agumon said. Don't worry Agumon, you already know how this is, let's not rush. Endeavor said. They may be simple thugs but we don't have to rush, let's approach them quietly. Understood. Agumon said climbing onto Endeavor's shoulder. Roger that. Shoto said while opening the cover of the D-terminal. D-terminal connected. Paladroman appears on the screen of the device. Spirit Evolution. Shoto slides his ring and middle finger on the screen and then extends his arm to the side and is then surrounded by data. Inside the data, Shoto's clothes were stored inside the D-terminal. Shoto points the D-terminal forward and it projects a screen showing Paladroman. The screen explodes in a blur of data that covers Shoto and transforms him into Paladroman. Then on his right shoulder a different shoulder pad replaces the one he already had. The transformation is complete. The data disappeared and instead of Shoto there was Paladroman however, Paladroman, as the other human spirits, was strange, different. Of all of them, Paladroman is the one that had the most radical change, he now has a more humanoid appearance, although he is still a dragon. His fur is now half white and half red, his right eye is grey while the left is blue. Lastly, his height is also greater, being the same height as Agunimon. Like the other chosen ones, his right shoulder pad is different having the symbol of the chosen ones on it, but his has the symbol of ice in the center being surrounded by the other five. I'm ready, Shoto said. A shame Toya couldn't join us. He and Burnin are taking care of business on the other side of the country, Endeavor said. So for now it's us come on, let's get closer. Without further ado, father and son begin to fly in the direction of the warehouse. The digital hero the Lost Legends opening. From the shadows a seated woman appears, Re Kishibe. The place lights up and Kishibe smiles evilly as his eyes begin to glow blue. As a flashback, the six chosen ones are seen fighting Lusamon during the first war. It is seen when the six chosen ones throw a large sphere of energy with their powers united at Lusamon. As a flashback, it is now seen when Suzanuman shoots Lusamon Sate and mode a beam from his weapon, Orachi. In the present day Izuku, in his Agunimog form, is seen charging at someone unseen. The rest of the chosen ones, in their forms of their respective human spirits, like Izuku, charge against someone unseen. That someone turns out to be Kishibe, who when she sees the chosen ones, her appearance glistens a little while she smiles evilly, and her eyes shine blue. The six chosen ones are seen in a group, Izuku in the middle, on his right Melissa and Shoto, on his left Shinso, Kaminari and Toya. Now Kishibe is seen sitting on a throne while she has a sword resting on the left of her throne. To her right is Sudu and behind her there are six figures in the shadows, each one with a sword. Kishibe slowly rises from the throne. Kishibe walks through a dark hallway. When Kishibe stops the background behind her lights up revealing a gigantic digit inside a glass tube. Then you see several scenes of people walking in the streets accompanied by several Digimon. The new normal life. Kanjo. Yurishai Tujan. 
Izuku is in the center of the city, he is relaxed. The breeze moves his hair and Izuku looks up at the sky with a smile. Like Izuku, Kaminari, Shoto, Shinso and Melissa are also in the center of the city, all enjoying the quiet day. They all talk among themselves while Melissa looks ahead and smiles. Toya is leaning against a wall while memories of when he was dabbed by flash through his head. Toya clenches his fist and then looks up with a determined expression. Kishib approaches the glass tube where the digig is. Kishib touches the crystal with her right hand. The egg begins to break, upon seeing this Kishib smiles, the egg begins to glow and everything explodes while a glow covers the entire room. The screen splits and you see Izuku and Kishib, the first with a frown and the second with an evil smile. Izuku, in his agunim and form charges at Kishib with a punch. Shinso, in his labam and form also charges at Kishib with his swords. Izuku and Shinsu attack Kishai, but she easily dodges the attacks and sends them flying with a kick each one. Melissa, in her Kaisman form, and Kaminari, in his Beetleman form, attack Kishai, Melissa with a gust of wind from her hands and Kaminari with an electric beam from his horn. However, Kishai easily deflects the attacks with her hands which explode behind her. Shoto, in his Paladroman form, attacks Kishai, but she easily dodges him and sends him flying with one blow. Toya, in his Loeman form, attacks Kishib with his spear, but she dodges it and then grabs him by the neck and throws him away. Izuku gets up from the ground and attacks Kishib with a fire punch, but she easily stops it with her hand. Izuku frowns as he tries to push his attack, Kishib for her part just smiles evilly. Shoda, a blue-haired girl and Nezu appear in Nezu's office, interestingly an Iceman scatter mode is climbing on Aizawa as if it were a scarf. A woman appears in a room dressed in red, with white hair, sunglasses, and a hat, alongside her is a stooped man dressed in a royal blue coat and an odd hat with randomly scattered golden buttons, a gray belt, blue pants, dark brown gloves and black shoes, in addition to having a cane to lean on. For a few seconds a creature with seven eyes and seven legs appears. Kishib appears with Sudu and the six shadow figures. The six chosen ones appear and behind them a spirit in the form of Suzanuman. The digital hero Lost Legends. Shoto and Endeavor land near the warehouse silently. Okay, we're here now what Shoto asked. Now is when we act hastily Endeavor said and then destroyed the wall of the warehouse with a burst of fire. Alright, the heroes have arrived. Inside the warehouse there are a total of three people and two Digimon who stare at Endeavor. After a few seconds of silence, two of these people take out a Digivide and make the two Digimon evolve. The Digimon becomes a Greyman and an Airdramon. They're hackers Shoto said. I can tell go Agumon Endeavor said taking his debuster and making Agumon Digivolve. Agumon Digivolve to Agumon Digivolves into Geogramon. Geogramon. Both Greymon collide and begin to struggle. Meanwhile, Shoto faces off against the Airdramon. Three against one I like those odds. Endeavor said as he faced the three humans. Meanwhile, in another part of the city, a group of people finished loading a truck with Digimon cages. All right, it's ready, go ahead. One of them said as he climbed into the passenger seat. Take me to the place indicated on the map. Yes sir. The other guy said as the doors of the place open. Once open the truck leaves. This is too easy. I told you. At that point the driver notices that there is something on the road. Or rather someone. I'm sorry but this is where you end up Denki said. Denki Kaminari Aka Chargeables. Age 18. Quark Electrification. Digimon Partner None. He possesses the digital spirits of thunder. Student from UA High. Hero Course Class 3A. Denki, like the others, has changed physically. He has grown in height, his hair is now shorter. Like the other chosen ones, his suit has changed, he is dressed in black boots, black pants, a blue shirt, and a yellow jacket, said jacket has the symbol of the digital thunder element on the back. Who is that the driver asked? Who cares run over him? The other guy said. Seeing that the truck doesn't stop, Kaminari smiles and then opens the cover of the D-terminal. D-terminal connected Beetleman appears on the screen of the device. Spirit Evolution Denki slides his ring and middle finger on the screen and then extends his arm to the side and is then surrounded by data. Inside the data, Denki's clothes were stored inside the D-terminal. Denki points the D-terminal forward and it projects a screen showing Beetleman. The screen explodes in a blur of data that covers Denki and transforms him into Beetleman. Then on his left shoulder a different shoulder pad replaces the one he already had. The transformation is complete. The data disappeared and instead of Denki there was Beetleman however, Beetleman, as the other human spirits was different. Although Beetleman at first glance appears unchanged, now his eyes are yellow, his helmet no longer covers his entire head, now yellow hair with a black lightning-shaped mark emerges from above, resembling Denki's hair. In both color and color, in addition to that, on his wrists he no longer has the plus, and symbols since they were replaced by lightning symbols. Finally throughout his armor there are several white lightning patterns throughout the armor. Like his friends, his left shoulder pad is different, having the symbol of the chosen ones on it. But his has the symbol of thunder in the center being surrounded by the other five. What the, the driver didn't finish speaking as Denki easily stopped the truck with his hands. I'm sorry but you're not going anywhere Denki said. 
At that, the driver and co-pilot get out of the truck and try to attack Danky, but then two people appear and stop the attacks. Don't worry, don't make this more difficult. Fat Gum said catching the driver in his body fat. Tishiro Toyamitsu Aka Fat Gum. Age 30. Quirk Fat Absorption. Digimon Partner None. Following the defeat of Lusimon and Fat Gum's participation in both wars, Fat Gum has enjoyed a large increase in popularity, finally being now Japan's number 10 hero. Give up now and save us trouble Kirishima said while tackling the co-pilot. Ijiro Kirishika Aka Red Riot. Age 18. Quirk Hardening. Digimon Partner None. Hero Course Class 3A. We have them, chargeable take care of the truck's charge. Fat Gum said. Right Denki said heading to the back of the truck, but when he opens the door he is greeted by a punch that makes him retreat. From the back of the truck comes a guy with four arms covered in diamonds. What's going on here the guy said. It seems we have a little problem. Yes, but it will be resolved soon Denki said attacking the guy with a punch, but the guy covers himself with his arms. Back with Endeavor, the hero dodges the attack of one of the three guys, then attacks another that tried to attack him with a fire, sending him flying. Come on is this all you can do Endeavor said as he kicks the third guy. Meanwhile, Geo Grayman and Grayman continue to struggle. Why are you helping these hackers Geo Grayman asked. Don't you see that they are just using you as a tool however Grayman does not respond, he just roars. Geo Grayman quickly grabs Grayman and throws him to the ground. It seems that you were reduced to a feral state Geo Grayman said. Quickly, Grayman gets up and charges at Geo Grayman. Mega Flame quickly, Geo Grayman attacks by shooting. A fire from his mouth which hits Grayman. Horn and Puzzle he then impales Grayman against the building with his horns. Grayman lets out one last roar before exploding into data. On the other hand, Erdurman begins to spin in the air to try to attack Shoto, but he easily dodges him. His attacks are not coordinated he only attacks to attack, he does not think about how to attack. Shoto thought as he dodged another attack from Erdurman, then covered his claws with ice. Ice claws. Erdurman roars upon receiving the attack, remaining motionless in the air, which Shoto takes advantage of. To finish precipitation breath Shoto fires an ice beam from his mouth which freezes Erdurman. Ice claws after attacking it with his ice claws, Erdurman explodes into data. Finally, Endeavor defeats the third guy with a fire punch. With this we finish. Endeavor said. Let's pick up these guys and take them to the police. Hackers lately their numbers have increased. Shoto said. I don't like what they do to my kind. Agumon said already after having returned to his Agumon form. That wild state I always see when we face these guys. Don't worry, we'll stop them. Shoto said. Right. Agumon said. You can talk later, now help me. Endeavor said as he carries two of the guys. Agumon climbs onto Endeavor's shoulder while Shoto carries the third guy. Without further ado, the two fly away from the place. Back with Denki, he is defending himself from the guy's attacks. Die the guy said as he attacks Denki with several punches. Denki doesn't defend himself against the blows. Okay I'm bored now. Suddenly, Denki catches the guy's fist and begins to surround his free fist with electricity. You've had your fun, now let's get this over with thunder fist Denki punches the guy in the face and then grabs him in his arms. Goodbye punishment shock Denki electrocutes the guy for a few seconds and then stops and the guy falls to the ground unconscious. You really like drama Fat Gum said as he arrives next to Denki. It's to add emotion to things. Denki said. Anyway let's take these cages down and free the Digimon. Fat Gum said. I'm already on it Kirishima said as he took several cages out of the truck. Chargeabolt helps Red Riot, I'll call the digital police. Fat Gum said. Rei Kemenari said. After a few minutes the digital police arrived and the Digimon were rescued. Good job, Riot, Chargeabolt. Fat Gum said. Thanks, I don't like this at all I can't believe there are people doing these things. Kirishima said. At that moment one of the rescued Digimon approached Kirishima. Said Digimon is a humanoid Digimon with a body made of grey rocks. It has yellow eyes and two rocks on its head that resemble barriers. It has three fingers on each hand and three toes on each foot. Thank you very much for rescuing us the Digimon said to Kirishima. Do not worry friend that's what heroes are for Kirishima said. You're so cool I would like to go with you the Digimon said. This takes Kirishima by surprise. Amami he said. Well thank you very much the truth is I would love for you to come with me. Then it's decided I will be your Digimon partner the Digimon said. I'm Gatsuman by the way. W what Kirishima said. Cool congratulations bro it looks like you now have a Digimon partner. Denki said after returning to his human form. Well the truth is that I was a little jealous of Ashido. Gyro, Yuraka and Ida Kirishima said. Very good I accept you as a partner get ready because we will become very strong together. Yes Gatsuman said high-fiving Kirishima who had a Digivus appear on his belt. Alright Kirishima said. 3A dorms. After another day dealing with hackers, Shoto finally returns to the dorms. On his way he crosses paths with Denki and Kirishima. Denki, Ijiro, I see you're back too. Just then Shoto notices Gatsuman next to Kirishima. And this is. It's Gatsuman, my new Digimon partner. Kirishima said. Oh so you managed to become a partner with a Digimon. That seems good to me. Shoto said. Yes, now we have to tell others Denki said and then the three of them enter the dorms. We are back Denki said opening the door, Shoto and Kirishima enter next to him. 
and we have a new member for the class. Hey Izuku said greeting. Next to him there were also other classmates, among them Mina who hugged Shoto when he arrived. What do you mean by a new member? Well Denki said and then looked at Kirishima. Kirishima smiles and then steps away to reveal Gatsuman. I present to you Gatsuman my Digimon partner he said. Another Digimon. A new member of the family Jellamon said as she along with Lunamon and Kakabuterimon approached Gatsuman. Welcome you will love living here. Yes, these people are very kind and we have the chosen ones who defeated Lusamon living with us Lunamon said. Just then Gaiaman and Ida approach. Welcome Gatsuman, from now on you are part of our family. Gaiaman said. I'm glad that another of us has a Digimon partner, but I must remind you that it is a very big responsibility. Ida said. Don't worry Tenya I'm ready Kirishima said. Gatsuman and I will form an incredible team like you. I'm glad to hear that, and I'm also happy that another Digimon is joining us. Izuku said. Mina, Achako, Tenya and Kayoka may have more time with their Digimon partners, but I'm sure you'll do well. Thanks bro Kirishima said. And for you Gatsuman Izuku said crouching down to Gostuman's height. As leader and representative of the Chosen Ones as well as class president, I welcome you to class 3A. Thanks, Gatsuman said. So new member, Hajiro said approaching Denki. What not even a welcome Denki jokingly asked to his girlfriend. Jairo just rolls her eyes. Now that we've finished this matter Denki, Shoto, we were waiting for you. Izuku said. What is it Shoto asked? Nezu wants to talk to us, I was hoping you could contact Toyota before Izuku could finish speaking. The D-terminals began to ring. It seems I'm late in telling you Nezu needs us. We haven't even arrived and we already have to leave again Denki said. Well that's what it's like to be a chosen one. Izuku said. Come on, let's change into our suits and go see what Nezu needs. What would Nezu want Kaminari said. Izuku, you know what Nezu wants to talk about, right Shinso asked, like the others, Shinso is dressed in his suit which consists of purple boots, black pants, a purple shirt, and a light blue jacket, said jacket has the symbol of the digital light element on the back, more or less, I know it has to do with Digimon trafficking, Izuku said, I think he has a clue to find the main client behind this, do you have any idea who could be behind it Shoto asked, not really Izuku said, it can be anyone, what I'm most interested in knowing is why this person or group needs so many Digimon, Melissa said. Obviously, it is important to know who is behind all this, but aren't you curious to know what all this is for? Now that you mention it, it's intriguing. Shinso said. Well soon we will know more about all this, we have arrived. Izuku said opening the door to the principal's office. In the middle of the room, which has been expanded from what it was before, is Nezu. Now without the need to camouflage himself anymore, sitting at his desk while looking at something on his computer. Hearing the door open, Nezu smiles as he sees the Chosen Ones enter. Hello, Chosen Ones. He said. Nezu you wanted to see us, don't you Izuku asked. The digital hero the Lost Legends opening. From the shadows a seated woman appears, Re Kishibe. The place lights up and Kishibe smiles evilly as his eyes begin to glow blue. As a flashback, the six chosen ones are seen fighting Lusamon during the first war. It is seen when the six chosen ones throw a large sphere of energy with their powers united at Lusamon. As a flashback, it is now seen when Suzanuman shoots Lusamon Sate and Moda beam from his weapon, Orochi. In the present day Izuku, in his Agunimok form, is seen charging at someone unseen. The rest of the chosen ones, in their forms of their respective human spirits, like Izuku, charge against someone unseen. That someone turns out to be Kishibe, who when she sees the chosen ones, her appearance glistens a little while she smiles evilly, and her eyes shine blue. The six chosen ones are seen in a group, Izuku in the middle, on his right Melissa and Shoto, on his left Shinso, Kaminari and Toya. Now Kishibe is seen sitting on a throne while she has a sword resting on the left of her throne. To her right is Sudu and behind her there are six figures in the shadows, each one with a sword. Kishibe slowly rises from the throne. Kishibe walks through a dark hallway. When Kishibe stops the background behind her lights up revealing a gigantic digit inside a glass tube. Then you see several scenes of people walking in the streets accompanied by several Digimon, the new normal life. Izuku is in the center of the city, he is relaxed. The breeze moves his hair and Izuku looks up at the sky with a smile. Like Izuku, Kaminari, Shoto, Shinso and Melissa are also in the center of the city, all enjoying the quiet day. They all talk among themselves while Melissa looks ahead and smiles. Toya is leaning against a wall while memories of when he was dabai flash through his head. Toya clenches his fist and then looks up with a determined expression. Kishibe approaches the glass tube where the digig is. Kishibe touches the crystal with her right hand. The egg begins to break, upon seeing this Kishibe smiles, the egg begins to glow and everything explodes while a glow covers the entire room. The screen splits and you see Izuku and Kishibe, the first with a frown and the second with an evil smile. Izuku, in his agunim and form charges at Kishibe with a punch. Shinso, in his labum and form also charges at Kishibe with his swords. Izuku and Shinsu attack Kishibe but she easily dodges the attacks and sends them flying with a kick each one. 
Melissa and her Kaysman form, and Kaminari, in his Beetleman form, attack Kishib. Melissa with a gust of wind from her hands and Kaminari with an electric beam from his horn. However, Kishib easily deflects the attacks with her hands which explode behind her. Shoto, in his Paladroman form, attacks Kishib but she easily dodges him and sends him flying with one blow. Toya, in his Loeman form, attacks Kishib with his spear, but she dodges it and then grabs him by the neck and throws him away. Izuku gets up from the ground and attacks Kishib with a fire punch, but she easily stops it with her hand. Izuku frowns as he tries to push his attack, Kishib for her part just smiles evilly. Shoda, a blue-haired girl and Nezu appear in Nezu's office, interestingly an Iceman scatter mode is climbing on Aizawa as if it were a scarf. A woman appears in a room dressed in red, with white hair, sunglasses, and a hat, alongside her is a stooped man dressed in a royal blue coat and an odd hat with randomly scattered golden buttons, a gray belt, blue pants, dark brown gloves and black shoes, in addition to having a cane to lean on. For a few seconds a creature with seven eyes and seven legs appears. Kishib appears with Sudu and the six shadow figures. The six chosen ones appear and behind them a spirit in the form of Suzanuman. The digital hero lost legends. Nezu looks at the chosen ones in front of him and smiles. Well, of course. He said. I know you just got back but this information is promising. Izuku said it's about the Digimon trafficking network. Shinso said. Yes, but before Todoroki-kun, do you think Toya could join us for this? Nezu asked. I'll try, Shoto said and then took out his phone and dialed his brother. In the meantime, tell me what you think of the new D-terminals Nezu asked. They are very useful, Izuku said. Yes, thanks to Kamashiro now you don't need to carry your D-scan everywhere. The D-terminal connects to it through digital waves, so no matter where you are, you can always transform. Nezu said. Speaking of transformations, do you have any idea why our human spirits look different? Denki asked. I have a theory, Nezu said. And it has to do with how long you have been using them. Her Melissa said. Are you suggesting that our prolonged use of human spirits caused them to alter their appearance? Yes, after the defeat of Lusaman you have not had the need to use your other spirits. There have been rare occasions when you have used the beast spirits, but mainly you have only used the human spirits. Nezu said. It's true since Lusaman was defeated I don't remember using Alderman again, let alone Kaiser Grayman or Suzanuman. Izuku said. Same here. Shinso said. I believe that the new appearance of your human spirits is a combination of them and you, you have stopped seeing them as extra powers and now see them as part of you, therefore they have adapted to look more like you. Nezu said. Makes sense I guess that explains that too Izuku snaps his fingers and a small flame appears in his hand. The flame is small and would only work as a torch. Wow that's new. Denki said. Since when can you do that Shinso asked. Since this morning, that's why I waited to meet on Nezu to show it. Izuku said. If Nezu's theory is true then that means we may gain some aspects of our transformations. Melissa said. In Izuku's case he obtained the ability to control fire. That's exactly what I was thinking. Nezu said. Well for now I can only do this but maybe in the future I can use it to fight without transforming. Izuku said. Cool Denki said. Perfect now, Todoroki-kun. What was your brother's response? Nezu asked. He is still working, but he has time if the meeting is quick. Shoto said. He will connect through the holotransmitter. Perfect. Nezu said pressing some buttons and suddenly a machine on the wall turned on and projected Toya's hologram. Nezu said pressing some buttons and suddenly a machine on the wall turned on and projected Toya's hologram. Toya, like the others, has a suit, although similar to that of the other chosen ones, his is somewhat different. Toya wears a white t-shirt, black pants, black boots, a black belt with the head of a golden sphinx as a buckle and a purple leather trench coat. Said trench coat has the symbol of digital darkness on the back. Unlike the other chosen ones, he has his D-terminal on his left arm instead of the right. So what is it Toya asked? We have information about Digimon traffic. Nezu said. I think I have the location of one of their main bases. I see that's good but make it quick. There are still matters to resolve here and Burnin is yelling at me to hurry up. I'll do it quickly. Nezu said and then pressed a button and showed a hologram of a 3D map. A few days ago I received an anonymous email that gave me an address. Anonymous are we sure we can trust that Shinso asked. Don't worry, I have confirmed that the source is legitimate and safe. Nezu said. Now, when going to that address we came across a small building. We looked for more about it and it is listed as a private building. However, when doing scans we detected a large source of digital energy in that place. Did you just recently detect it? Don't you have scanning equipment to scan for suspicious digital activity? Shoto asked. The place probably has some kind of inhibitor that allows it to go unnoticed by larger scale scans. Nezu said. What did you find? Izuku asked. We did not want to risk an approach without you. Nezu said. But now you are here. So you're saying that what we're going to do is go investigate that place Izuku asked. Right? I'll give you the coordinates and you'll do what you do best, take down bad guys. Nezu said. Understood. Izuku said. I guess we won't be counting on you Toya. Yeah I'm sorry, I know it's my duty to help with things like this but if I leave here. We understand, don't worry, I just want you to be aware of the situation. Any discovery we will let you know. Nezu said. Understood, alright, if that's all I'm leaving. Good luck guys, night lion out. Toya said and then disconnected. 
All right, we have our mission, it's time to go. Izuku said and then received the coordinates in his D-terminal. Coordinates received, let's move. Without further ado, the five leave for the given location. The night is calm and silent, but that silence is interrupted by a motorcycle and a car. Izuku and Melissa are riding on the motorcycle. Izuku is driving while Melissa is the co-pilot. Meanwhile in the car are Shoto, who owns the car and is driving, Shinso, in the co-pilot seat, and Denki, in the rear seats. How much left Shoto asks through the earpiece. We are close, Izuku said. We will park nearby and walk the rest of the way we don't want to attract attention with the sound of the engines. Understood, Shoto said. Man this place is pretty isolated from the rest of the city what are these people up to Denki said. That's what we'll find out. Izuku said. Why do these kind of people always choose such ugly places for their operations Melissa said. Why do these types of people always choose such ugly places for their operations Shinso said. I know it's so typical and obvious that I don't know why no one investigates these places. Melissa said. That's actually a good point. Denki said. We're close, let's park here. Izuku said as he turns into an alley and parks in it. Shoto parks outside the alley. The five begin their way to their destination. After walking for a few minutes they arrive at what looks like a warehouse. So, this is the place Denki said. Yes, Izuku said as he uses his D-terminal to scan the place. Nezu was right, there is a large amount of digital energy in this place it seems to be gathering in the center of the building. It's a lot of energy I have a bad feeling. Shinso said. Then we have to stop them. Izuku said. Melissa, Hitoshi, go to the right, Shoto, Denki, you go to the left, try to find a way to enter without attracting attention, I will search this area. What exactly are we looking for Denki asked. Alternate entrances other than the main one. Izuku said. We have to try to be stealthier we don't want to repeat what happened in Kansai. Right Denki said. All right move out. Izuku ordered and the five of them started to move. Melissa and Shinso head to the right of the building, Denki and Shoto to the left, meanwhile Izuku goes down the small hill to head towards the building. Izuku uses his D-terminal again to detect digital energies. It's too much energy I have to get in no matter what. Izuku thought as he looked around until he noticed a hatch for the ventilation system. Bingo. With ease Izuku climbs the wall and opens the ventilation hatch and enters. Alright, let's go where this takes us Izuku continues his way, crawling through the ventilation as quietly as possible. After a couple of minutes Izuku's D-terminal begins to ring slightly. Yes he asked. Izuku, we found the back entrance. Shinso said from the D-terminal's communicator. Is there any guard Izuku asked. Not for the moment. Shinso said. We will proceed with caution. Understood. Izuku said. Izuku, we found the main entrance. Shoto said from the communicator. Are there any guards? Izuku asked. Yes, but there is something interesting. Shoto said. Denki had a hunch and we scanned the guards through Digimon in disguise. Digimon Izuku wondered. That changes things. What do we do? Shoto asked. Keep a low profile and try to find another entrance. Izuku said. Understood. Shoto said. All right, I have to keep moving. Izuku said as he continues to move. After more minutes of crawling, Izuku reaches another trapdoor through which he can see what is in the other side. On the other side there is a strange machine connected to another. In the first machine there is a sword inside a tube. On the other hand, the second machine has several straps to keep someone, or something, in place. Izuku focuses his attention on the sword in the tube. It somehow felt familiar. The sword is a sword with two blades on one side and its handle is golden. However the most interesting thing is that the sword has four wings, two on the handle and two on the pommel. But the interesting thing is that the two right wings they are angelic and white, and the two black ones are demonic and black. It looks familiar but I don't know why Izuku said and then took out his D-terminal and scanned the sword. This is the center of energy all the energy converges on this sword what are they up to? Izuku, we have problems. Shinso said. What is it? Guards, we have many guards and we can't advance. Shinso said. I see Shoto, Denki, did you manage to get in? No, not yet. Shoto said. All right, leave that, go to the main entrance and cause a distraction. Izuku said. With Shoto and Denki. Understood. Shoto said. All right, you heard him, come on. All right. Denki said. They both head to the entrance and walk towards the guards. Stop there, this is private property one of the guards said. Hey, they're not the other one said. Oh yes yes we are ready Denki Shoto asked. Hell yeah Denki said. Evolution they both shout using their D-terminals to transform into Paladroman and Beetleman. SHT the chosen ones one of the guards said. Quick sound the alarm. One of the two guards enters the building while the other leaves his human disguise to reveal his Digimon appearance and attempt to attack Shoto. Shoto easily dodges the Digimon's attack so that Denki then hits him and sends him flying. And now is when the rest come. Denki said. And just as Denki said, several Digimon come out to face them. Let's get this over with. Shoto said. With Hitoshi and Melissa. We have enemies a guard arrived and said. You stay here you come with us. After this the guards left, leaving only one behind. Well now there's only one left let's finish him off. Melissa said. No, I'll take care of him, you continue. Hitoshi said. You sure Melissa asked? Yes. Hitoshi said coming out of his hiding place to face the only guard. 
There are more of you here, the guard said as he takes off his human disguise. But not for long. Said Digimon has the appearance of a green humanoid lizard. He has purple pants, knives in his arms and a pair of swords which he carries on his back. This Digimon is a Dinuyaman. Hitoshi smiles and lifts the cover of his D-terminal. D-terminal connected Labaman appears on the screen of the device. Spirit evolution Hitoshi slides his ring and middle finger on the screen and then extends his arm to the side and is then surrounded by data. Inside the data, Hitoshi's clothes were stored inside the D-terminal. Hitoshi points the D-terminal forward and it projects a screen showing Labaman. The screen explodes in a blur of data that covers Hitoshi and transforms him into Labaman. Then on his left shoulder a different shoulder pad replaces the one he already had. The transformation is complete. The data disappeared and instead of Hitoshi there was Labaman however, Labaman, like the other spirits, was different. Labaman still retains his armor, however he now has many more purple details than before. His eyes and hair are now purple resembling Hitoshi's, and finally his scarf is now red. Hitoshi turns on his swords and blocks an attack from Dinoyaman's swords. You wanna fight Hitoshi said. Let's fight Hitoshi pushes Dinoyaman away from the entrance. This is taken advantage of by Melissa who sneaks to the entrance, just then she feels something and jumps to the left, dodging the attack of a Digimon that fell from the ceiling. You have good reflexes. The Digimon said, it's a Yaksuman. Great in the end, being stealthy was of no use Melissa said while lifting the cover of her D-terminal. D-terminal connected Kaysman appears on the screen of the device. Spirit evolution Melissa slides her ring and middle finger on the screen and then extends her arm to the side and is then surrounded by data. Inside the data, Melissa's clothes were stored inside the D-terminal. Melissa points the D-terminal forward and it projects a screen showing Kaysman. The screen explodes in a blur of data that covers Melissa and transforms her into Kaysman. Then on her right shoulder a different shoulder pad replaces the one she already had. The transformation is complete. The data disappeared and instead of Melissa there was Kaysman. Melissa quickly attacks Yaksuman with a kick but he covers himself with the shields of his arms. Let's see if you know how to dance Yaksuman said attacking Melissa with his swords but she dodges them by doing a backflip. Believe me, I know how to dance Melissa said, dodging another attack from Yaksuman and counterattacking with a kick to the Digimon's stomach. With Izuku. Izuku continues observing the machine, then two Digimon enter the place while dragging a third rookie level Digimon. What are they doing Izuku thought. Is it safe to do this while we are being attacked one of the Digimon asked. These are the boss's orders. The other one said. Let's hurry up and we'll finish sooner. The Digimon place the third one in the machine and tie him with the straps. Activate the extractor. One Digimon said. Then the machine activates and the tied Digimon begins to scream in pain. What are they doing Izuku thought with anger. After a few seconds the bound Digimon explodes into data and the machine absorbs it, redirecting it towards the sword which absorbs the data. All right, bring on the next one. One of the Digimon said while the second brings another rookie level Digimon and ties it to the machine. Unable to allow it, Izuku kicks open the vent cover and steps out to face the two Digimon. I won't allow it Izuku said while preparing his D-terminal. Evolution Izuku transforms into Agunimon and with a double punch of fire destroys both Digimon quickly. Without wasting time Izuku frees the captured Digimon. Are you okay he asked. Why yeah but there are more Digimon trapped here. The Digimon said. You know where they are Izuku asks and the Digimon nods. In that case take me there I'm going to get all of you out of here. Izuku begins to follow the Digimon, however he does not realize that a Digimon has arrived at the place. Said Digimon has the appearance of a yellow ape with a bone tied to its back. This Digimon is an Apeman. Apeman watches as Izuku leaves, then turns towards the machine, breaks the glass, and takes the sword and then follows Izuku. It's time to test this thing. Apeman said. 